Hey everybody, Sean Bukowski here. Hope you all had a great weekend. I uh, want to talk about something I saw in Texas Supreme Court case, actually, that caught my eye from, I think the decision came down within the last couple of weeks, um, about nuisance law. And this is something that when I first went to law school was very surprising, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Um, but ultimately, nuisance, if you have a neighbor that is basically interfering with your use and enjoyment of your property, uh, you might have a nuisance claim against that neighbor. And what that means is um, you know, you, you'd have to you'd file a claim against them saying that they're interfering, again, with the use of the majority of property. And that can be you know, an odor, that can be a noise, um, whatever it can be. Uh, and then once you get to court, the court is going to do a balancing act. So it's going to look at you know, how severe is it? What are the what, what kind of area are you in? Um, you know, if you're if you're in a, a downtown area versus a residential area, um, how consistent is it? Is it temporary or consistent? Uh, what would a normal person? How affected would they be? And they're going to weigh all of those issues to kind of determine what uh, you know whether it qualifies as a nuisance, if it rises to the level of an actual nuisance. Um, and then at that point. If it does rise to that level, uh, the court will look at what are some of the options. I mean, you can get an injunction to potentially get them to stop. Um, the, the, this is an interesting one because the case I was looking at from the court was uh, some chicken farms that smelled so bad, and the trial court issued an injunction shutting them down effectively, and the Supreme Court turned that over, and they thought that was a little severe. Um, but you can also get... Uh, monetary damages so there's a few different uh, potential remedies that you can get if the, your neighbor is actually qualifying as a nuisance and here's the thing that really surprised me in law school which um, really kind of opened my eyes it was really, I, when you think about it I guess it makes sense but it but it, it did surprise it does surprise you when you first hear it it doesn't matter necessarily who was there first so these poultry farms if they were built way before these residences were built and, and the residents come and move there, theoretically that can still be a nuisance because they're you know having this pollution in the air. Um, and so you know being the, the first one there, there's no kind of come to the nuisance defense or anything like that. Uh, it's potential that you can still be liable for a nuisance. So uh, just something to think about. Uh, it's you know kind of interesting in a nerdy real estate lawyer kind of way, but uh, I think it's uh, an interesting case in the Supreme Court and an interesting area of law to kind of think about it as you go along. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, please give us a call and please sign up for our blog and our YouTube channel and our podcast. Thanks.